Remember that the saturation curve is a characteristic of hemoglobin. It's a, it's, hemoglobin is a protein, so it has all kinds of molecular characteristics. Because of that, because it's determined by hemoglobin's characteristics, anything that affects hemoglobin can affect the saturation curve. In other words, can shift it to the right or to the left. All right, so what does that mean? A shift to the left means higher saturations for the same PO2. All right, so a shift to the left in my example here is going to be our elevated pH, right? So in the normal case, at a PO2 of 40, our um, saturation is 60%. Well, if our pH is 7.6, at 40, we are almost 80%, right? So we have a higher saturation for the same PO2. That's the math. Now, what does that mean for the fizz? This favors uptake. In other words, the hemoglobin is more vigorous at grabbing oxygen than it is at releasing it. Okay. Now, a shift to the right, which there are more of those, um, results in a lower saturation for the same PO2. Okay, so let's pick on 7.2. Here's 40 again. At 40, at 7.4, we have a, a, a saturation of 60. To get a saturation of 60 at 7.2, we need to be a PO2 of 50, right? So a shift to the right means we have less saturation for the same PO2. Now, why does that matter fizz-wise? It favors release. In other words, it's, um, uh, hemoglobin is quicker to release its um, oxygen, okay? So it has a lower saturation at the same PO2. So remember, saturation, high is holding on, low is releasing, okay? So low is dumping. So we, um, we, a shift to the right increases the amount of dumping for a given PO2, all right? So why do we get shifts to the right? There are a couple of reasons, number one, hydrogen ions, pH changes everything, right? So it goes both ways on that one. Increased CO2 does that. These number one and two together, um, we call that the Haldane effect. Um, there's a slide on that at the end. Uh, increased temperature, um, so as you get warmer, you're, you, are, uh, you dump oxygen more easily. And then increased BPG. We're not gonna talk a lot about BPG, um, BPG is by, where is it, 2,3-biphosphoglycerate. Um, it is an important uh, uh, way that we adapt to altitude, to high altitude, okay? So um, when our BPG is higher, we, uh, for the same PO2, we have a lower um, saturation. So in other words, when you're at altitude, there's less air, there's less oxygen in the air, right? So we need to dump the same amount of oxygen at a lower PO2 when we're at altitude, right? So that's what BPG does. What are we getting at here? Okay, so if you have increased CO2, increased temperature, and increased hydrogen ions, is that a busy or not busy tissue? That is a busy tissue. Do we want more oxygen delivery or less than a busy tissue? More. So it makes sense that these things shifted to the right because we get a lower saturation for the same PO2. In other words, we increase dumping, all right? When a shift to the right increases oxygen offload. So these are all uh, components of autoregulation too. So they're also gonna increase blood flow, okay? But in addition to increasing blood flow, those characteristics are also gonna encourage hemoglobin to dump more oxygen in that area. You see why I like you, woman? Like, it's smart. It, it does a lot of smart things for just being a dumb protein. <laughs> <laughs>